The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. My old grandfather, Mose Neal, back in Kansas, was a sportsman, competition trap and skeet shooter and fisherman, mayor of his town, and a student of Indian lore and many other things. But also, he was an artist. And as a little boy, I loved to sit in his studio in Emporia, Kansas, and watch him work with his various brushes, large and small, and I delighted in the aromas of the oil paints he mixed and blended, then began to dab and stroke onto the canvas stretched on its wooden frame. Sometimes when he first began a picture, I had no idea what it would be. He would draw a few lines with pencil to lay out the perspective and essential elements of a scene, then begin to fill in his sketch with colors, blue-gray for the skies, white clouds, green trees, granite-gray mountain peaks, and perhaps an azure lake or stream. But the process took many days, and sometimes along the way, it didn't look very artistic. It didn't look like much of anything. Different patches of colors here and there with pencil scribblings on canvas in between. But... It wasn't finished yet, and perhaps two or three weeks later, when the work was completed, there on the easel stood a simple but compelling work of art, usually in nature study, which to me was a thing of genuine beauty. I have in my den one of his paintings of ducks in flight over a pond, and I have enjoyed it since boyhood, and I cherish it still today, but I remember when he was painting it. For a while, I didn't know how it would turn out, or if it would turn out, but it wasn't finished yet. And here is the vitally important point. Neither are you. The master artist of the universe of universes, the living God, is not through with you yet. So don't judge your life by its sketchy incompleteness, its dribblings or spatterings here and there. You are not finished yet. But when you place your life in the hands of the living God, you may be assured that something of beauty will in time be the result. But at many times along the way, you may despair that anything of value will come of it. But be patient. Trust God. Relax, because God is not through with you yet. And in the end, the concept of the master artist of the universe will emerge in real beauty, and you will learn what he had in mind all along. It will take time, but it will be worth it, because God loves you and wants to make of your life a joyous and loving masterwork of faith and happiness and meaningful service to God and humanity. At times along the way, it may not seem that much of permanent value is transpiring, but maintain your confidence in God, and you may be assured that all will culminate in a good and glorious conclusion. Trust God to have an overview of the purpose of your life on earth, superseding anything which might so much as ever have entered your mind. God's ways are not man's ways, and God's thoughts are higher than man's thinking. God has a good will for you, which will emerge in time to disclose a perspective far transcending anything you might have imagined. Remember that with God... All things are possible. God is not randomly and whimsically painting a caricature or cartoon of your life. It is to be a portrait of human dignity overarched by divine grandeur, of earthly pigments mixed with hues of heaven in the hands of a God who will ultimately paint the picture of your life as one of valiant struggle, some defeats and some victories, weariness, refreshing rest, then trying and striving again, a portrait of laughter, tears, hope and love, disappointed days, and even faltering faith, but finally seen as mere parts and portions of a far larger picture than you knew. The living portrait of you as the living son or daughter of God you really are, and have been destined in the mind of God to become, because God loves you. God cares about you. 
and there is a bigger picture for your life than you may see or know at any given moment. God's will for you spans not only the days and decades of your life here on this earth, but the endless eons of eternity as well. You are part of a bigger picture than you know. In the hands of the master artist of the starry galaxies and whose plans and purposes for you are good, holy, totally, and unreservedly good, God will bring goodness in your life because God loves you as a father loves a child. And if you will faithfully trust God, he will work his will in your life, and yours will be a portrait for time and for eternity of the beloved and valuable son or daughter of God you really are and have always longed to be. This is thrilling, and further realize God has things for you to do. Out here at the Horseshoe Ranch, we have wild raspberries growing along the fences. They're delicious to eat when they're ripe, but if you pick them prematurely, they're sour and bitter to the taste. Many plans and projects of human life are such as that, thoroughly unpalatable until their time is ripe. Yet in active cooperation with the Supreme, the Spirit of God within your mind can adjust your thoughts and your thinking so that you will be able to discern the signs of the times in your life and prepare and ready yourself for the new tasks and ventures which God has in the future for you. That is precisely what you are doing when you pray to find and know the purposes of God. When you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, you are seeking to align and synchronize your mind and will with the mind and will of God but ever mindful of the truth that some answers to that prayer can only come in God's good time. God's delay is not God's denial. Every little boy or girl reared in the country or around fruit fields and orchards quickly learns not to eat green fruit. It isn't ready yet. And just as different fruits may mature at different times of the season, you will find that different projects and possibilities ripen at different times in your life. Hence, the vital necessity of developing your discernment. God has things for you to do with your life, but some of the things you may aspire to achieve may not be ready yet for the undertaking. Every day and every year of your life, look about you for the things that are ready to be done, and you are ready to undertake, assuming that they're good and worthy projects at the outset. But ask of any proposed task, is it part of the will of God for you? Is it part of the divine master plan for your life? Does it advance the cause of the spiritual renaissance within your life and upon this earth? Does it bring greater goodness, truth, and beauty to your life and that of those about you? And is it a project that is ripe and ready for action now? Some of these things you learn by personal experience, but there is definite guidance available within your mind for the making of those decisions. It is sometimes called the still, small voice within, or the Spirit of God speaking to the soul, or the divine illumination of the mind. It is written in Proverbs that the Spirit in man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inmost parts. And said Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you. This guidance and direction for your life is real. If you will attune your mind to it, you will learn of it. As you face the choices of human life day by day, you will feel God giving added weight to the best alternatives which you should choose. It is as though the very circuits of spiritual gravity make one decision or the other, the more weighty alternative, the one which you ought to choose in the given situation. But be ever mindful that God does have a will for your life. It is not a fleeting phantasm or a mere gossamer wisp of the imagination. Some think of the will of God as a mist on a meadow, soon burnt away by the noontime sunshine. But the will of God is among the incredibly powerful forces of this universe of universes. The will of God in its power makes hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and volcanoes look insignificant. The power of the will of God is far greater even than the energy which formed the galaxies and universes, suns, and solar systems. For the will of God is the tremendous, transcendent, immutable, ultimate force for good in all creation, indeed in all reality. And by the active seeking and finding of the will of God, you can come to cooperate with God's purposes in all things in your life, not only in what you do, but how you do it. 
not only what and how you do, but when to do it. In the rich, ripe fullness of time, all of this is available to you if you will seek daily for God's perspective, purposes, priorities, and will for your life. Every day that you live it, God loves you and desires nothing but the greatest possible good for your life. God wants nothing but the best for you. And God calls you to higher aspirations and activities than you have ever consistently undertaken before. In this lies peace and joy and love, serenity, and the ultimate contentment of human life, the contentment of actively doing the will of God for your life and living every day with a vital sense of daily companionship with God. May that begin for you right here and right now, this very moment. And may you begin to live with the joy and the gladness, the exuberance and the exhilaration, the serenity, the contentment, all of these things which God created for you and God created you for. He created you to live as the son or daughter of the living God. And by living faith, all this may be yours. For free literature on the spiritual life, things I've written on these very topics about finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually. Those are some of the chapter titles in a book titled Growing Spiritually. Yours, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>